What's going on everyone? John Matrix here with another Hunt Showdown video for you guys. So, Hunt Showdown's been out in full release now for a few months. And back when Hunt Showdown first initially went into its early access release, after a few weeks of playing it, I made a video talking about the stuff that I liked in Hunt Showdown and the stuff that I didn't like about Hunt Showdown and what I'd like to see change in Hunt Showdown moving forward. And since Hunt Showdown has now been out in its full release form for a few months now, I wanted to revisit those topics and just talk about uh, the things that Hunt Showdown has done that I like in, in Hunt Showdown since it's uh, been in early access and through its development. Uh, some things that I think that Hunt Showdown can improve on and um, some things that I would like to see added in Hunt Showdown because I think it would be interesting to see how it changes the gameplay of Hunt Showdown. So yeah, moving forward, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the good stuff that's in Hunt Showdown, the bad stuff that's in Hunt Showdown, stuff I'd like to see added to Hunt Showdown, and along the way, I'm going to talk about uh, the changes that uh, could be made to improve on some of the bad stuff in Hunt Showdown. So starting off with the good stuff, um, they've added looting to the game. Um, you know, that's been in the game for quite a while now. But back when Hunt Showdown first came out, there was no looting really of any kind. You couldn't loot any down hunters, you couldn't swap out any weapons, etc., etc. So, um, what I would like to see is those looting mechanics expanded on a little bit. And it doesn't need to be anything crazy. Um, you know, like Escape from Tarkov, I guess, is pretty much the closest game you could really kind of compare Hunt to. Because um, Hunt's not really a battle royale. Um... It's more like Escape from Tarkov, where you go into a mission, you do some things, and you extract when you can. Um, so, the looting in Hunt Showdown is very simplistic. For those of you that haven't played Hunt Showdown in a while, the looting, like I said, you can kill a person, their guns fall on the ground, and you can swap out your guns for their guns, depending on the weapon slots. And then you can loot the body and you get random things back. You can get money, you can get refills of your throwables, refills of your consumables, meds, or just ammunition. And what I would like to see is the ability to, instead of just swapping out weapons, have a slot or two to just simply pick up a weapon and put, you know, down weapons in that slot that you could then extract with. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something that's like free that's given. They could add items in the store that you could buy that add an inventory slot. Like you could have a rifle sling that goes around your back and maybe another pistol holster. And so that, that rifle sling that's on your back, you can have a large or medium slot weapon that fits in there. And then the pistol sling is just a small weapon. So any kind of small pistol could fit in there. And so... You could go in, you could kill someone, you could take their primary and secondary weapon and extract with it. And you could do it in a way to where, you know, those weapons, when they go in that slot, they lose all their ammo. So you can't sit there and, you know, be in the middle of a battle and, you know, have a Mosin and then a shotgun on your back and sit there and hot swap in between, you know, fights for, for, you know, the different ranges, close-up and, and long range, you know, to kind of bypass that quartermaster mechanic, or uh, perk, I should say. So, you know, there could be ways that that could be done, but I would just like to see the looting expanded on a little bit and make it so that you can extract with more weapons than what you came in with as another potential way of, you know, making money. You know, I guess that, you know, because it's contraband, you can't really sell them at that point, but I kind of feel like that system needs to be updated a little bit more i don't feel like really that would hurt the game to be able to sell some of the weapons like they had the cleaning mechanic in the game maybe you can clean the weapon and then sell it um to make a little bit more money so you know it removes that contraband or maybe there's another system that could remove the contraband thing so you could sell it you know i don't know um but just to expand on the looting a little bit you know that's what i would like to see um, another great thing that they've added to Hunt Showdown since its first initial early access release is you just you can have a free hunter now. And that was a big problem back in the day for a lot of people is they would run out of money and you would just get this random like tier zero hunter with really bad gear, no traits, and, and just nothing. And so now you can at least get a free hunter with some, some random gear and if you still have money, you know, it's a way that you can get a free hunter and then just, you know, change their loadout. 
with uh, spending minimal amount of money. So it gives you some more options to save money. Um, the 3D viewer in the store is a pretty cool little um, addition to the game. Uh, the main thing that's interesting about it is that you can scroll out and you can fire the weapons and you can hear what the weapons sound like at the various distances. And I feel like this is a great addition just because you can then tell, okay, they're X far away once you get used to it. It's something that I feel should be added to a lot of games with larger maps, especially Battle Royale games like Apex or PUBG or something like that. Um, so 3D Viewer is great, Free Hunter, uh, Quick Play. Quick Play is a new mode that's been added into the game that wasn't in the early access release. And it's basically a battle royale, a solo battle royale experience. And you get a free hunter to start off with, with a random loadout that you get to select between, you know, a pistol, a shotgun, a melee weapon, or you can just choose random and it'll randomly give you one. You go into the game, you got to find four clues. Once you get those four clues, you get what's called the wellspring. There's a certain amount of tickets. Those tickets count down. Those tickets, while you have the wellspring, turn into money. The clues that you find turn into random traits, and then you gear yourself up by finding weapons out in the world. Very simple gameplay mechanic, but it's a great way to get a free hunter with a free loadout if you win. If you win the quick play mode, the hunter that you have with its random traits and its gear and the money that you earned, you get to take that hunter then into the bounty hunt game mode, which is the normal game mode. If you lose, you lose, but you don't lose anything. You know, you've you've just lost a free hunter. You didn't pay for anything. You haven't lost any money. There's no real punishment for losing. And then trios. The trio game mode has really expanded Hunt Showdown, in my opinion. I like trios way more than duos. I find the fights are more intense. They're more exciting. People are willing to fight more in trios, in my experience. And they're willing to be a little more bold and aggressive in trios because you have that extra teammate that can revive you whereas in hunt showdown's duo mode um i find that it, it's a little more campy people aren't willing to take as many risks even though you do tend to find teams a little more often earlier on because of how the spawning is but um trios has been a great addition to hunt showdown and what i would like to see is them expand on that even further i know that they've they've said that they've push the AI and the servers to about, you know, its limit with what they've done right now. But what I would really like to see is a larger map with a three boss contract and four teams of four players on each team. I think that would be great. I think that would be a great um, mode to add as well. And the, the four, you know, the four V... Four, four squads, you know, with four players. That uh, mode might be just a three-contract only mode, and, you know, we get some bigger maps. Um, but if that could be done, I would like to see that added. And I would like to even see them maybe reduce the AI in the server, if that's something that can be done, in order to push that mode so that we could have that. Because when it comes down to it, the PvP is what the game is really about. The PvE aspect is just kind of another layer to the combat um while you're in a pvp fight but that's really what everyone plays the game for is the pvp so those are kind of the the major mechanics that they've added to the game that i really enjoy that i feel have improved on showdown and taken it to the next level um so let's talk about some of the bad stuff that's in hunt showdown that i feel needs to be worked on and um could improve the game even more um so the first thing that i'm going to bring up is teaming and mmr and teaming is really kind of only something that happens in quick play, but it is something that's very frustrating because it has happened to me quite a bit in quick play where, you know, I'm just in there and I'm fighting and all of a sudden, you know, there's more than one person. They don't fight each other. They just fight me. And then when I spectate, you know, they don't fight each other at all and they just run off. So it's obvious they're teaming with each other. And it does happen quite a bit in quick play, and it kind of makes me not really want to play quick play because of that. I do enjoy the bounty hunt mode overall anyway, so I would rather play the bounty hunt mode. But playing solos in bounty hunt is quite difficult. So when you don't have anyone to play with and you don't feel like queuing up with a random person, it is nice to have, you know, a dedicated solo game mode to play. But when you get teamed up on in a game that's supposed to be all solos that gets frustrating 
Um, and then having an MMR system in the game is just something that I, I would would be great to have. You know, making sure that queues um, when you get queued up with people, you're on a more level playing field as far as skill goes. I thought they had an MMR system in this game at one point in time, and maybe they got rid of it and are reworking it. Uh, I've heard and read various things, both directions, that says there is an MMR in the game. There isn't an MMR in the game. It's something they're still working on. It's something they're still tweaking. And maybe they've got rid of it right now to, to reduce queue times, etc. But having an MMR in the game would be great so that people, mostly for newer players, can get matched up with um, people of equal skill level. Because that's really what, you know, makes games good is when it doesn't matter what skill level you're at if you're a beginner or if you've got several thousand hours in Hunt Showdown, you know, fighting against people of equal skill level is what really makes the fights more intense and enjoyable. Um, so the next thing is something that has been talked about um, since the beginning, and it's really kind of talking about the various end game weapons. And I'm talking about uh, the Dolch and the Nitro and the Crown and King and the Aftermath. And those weapons that have always been kind of controversial and everyone's had an issue with or an opinion on and whether should be in the game or not. And they are really the, the strong weapons. I mean, the Dolch has been nerfed so many times. The Nitro has been nerfed a bunch of times. All of them have. The Crown King and the Aftermath. And I feel like there's a simple solution to that, These the, those weapons in general. And it's already a mechanic that's in the game that's in quick play. And I feel like what would be a simple solution to those weapons, I feel like rebalance those weapons back to maybe not necessarily their initial release, but to when they were stronger. And just make them world spawn weapons. Just like cashiers, uh, you know, cash registers in the game are random spawns. You know, have maybe a dead hunter that uh, randomly spawns around the map or maybe you know randomly have the the weapons spawn at caravans or something like that so caravans can be item you know more areas in contention as well instead of just the bosses where there's a random chance for some of these weapons to spawn you know the you turn them into world spawn weapons they're then contraband weapons so you can only have one in your inventory at a time that reduces the number of these weapons being in games um and it also makes it so when you have the weapons, you know, it's that much more, I guess, fulfilling or satisfying when you find them. It's a rare thing. They could even do something to where, you know, as this weapon's being used and people are being killed and it's trading hands and trading hands and trading hands, you know, maybe you could go into the 3D, you know, model viewer and you could see the names of all the players who have used this weapon or have been killed by this weapon or something like that. You know, it would be a cool little mechanic. But, you know, um, I feel like that would be a great way to balance a lot of those endgame weapons that people still have issues with or are complaining with. Um, and there, there are just certain weapons in this game, in my opinion, that I feel like take away from the skill in the game. And, you know, that's mostly like those rate-of-fire weapons. Weapons with higher rate-of-fire just feel kind of out of place in this game because most of the weapons in this game are really, you know, single shot bolt action weapons or double action revolvers that take extra time to use. Granted, there's fanning, but fanning, in my opinion, is kind of really a counter to shotguns. If you don't want to have a shotgun, you kind of have to have fanning, you know, with a pistol to deal with people up close. Um, and then so what they've also done is added, you know, like the Bornheim and the Nagant uh, officer uh, for those that don't want fanning or haven't been able to unlock fanning yet, you know, etc. Um, so, I feel like that's a solution for some of those issues with those guns. You know, you can add some some stronger weapons to the game um, that aren't available to the store that could just be found in the world. They're world spawn weapons, and that's how you find them. Um, so, I want to talk about one-shot mechanics in the game. And when I'm talking about one-shot mechanics, I'm not necessarily talking about headshots uh, or skill-based one-shot mechanics. You know, I'm all for skill-based one-shot mechanics. Um, my main FPS background is Counter-Strike, which, you know, is, I'm sure most of you guys know, it's a you know, faster-paced game that rewards headshots. 
and I'm all about rewarding headshots. I think headshots should be something that are more of a reward and, and more games, but uh, more most FPS shooters nowadays kind of go with the Call of Duty um, style of just faster run and gun, and headshots aren't quite as important. But um, I like that headshots are important in Hunt Showdown. Um, and coming from that Counter-Strike background, it's something that uh, makes me want to get better at the game. You know, it makes me want to improve by getting those headshots. And it adds a layer of skill to the game that uh, I enjoy. You know, it's very easy to see who's better at the game, you know, by their consistency of getting headshots. And uh, especially in a game like Hunt Showdown where... You know, there's not bullet drop, but there is bullet travel time. So, you know, being able to get headshots consistency consistently at longer ranges is a pretty hard thing to do. So, you know, it's it's rewarding and very satisfying when you get that long range headshot with a rifle and you down someone in one hit. It's very satisfying. Now, the reverse of that, though, and I'm sure this has happened to pretty much everyone that's played Hunt Showdown. You know, you, uh, you've come in with a good expensive loadout, you got a LaBelle or a Mosin, whether it's a sniper or not, and you get into a nice fight, and, you know, you round the corner, you see a guy, you, you hit him with your, your rifle before he can, you know, shoot at you, and you're, you're quick swapping your pistol so you can get that last shot off to finish him, and they just turn and one-shot you with a shotgun or a crossbow and you die simply because of the weapon that they have they don't headshot you they hit you in the chest with a crossbow or a shotgun and you just die simply because they have that weapon now shotguns are a little bit trickier you know shotguns are always something that has been you know a difficult thing for people to balance in games when I mean, you look at PUBG, those shotguns have always been either underpowered or overpowered and that's just pretty much how shotguns always are in games they're either underpowered or overpowered and it's just something that's that's really kind of a, a delicate balance. Um, me, in my opinion, and it's still because of the nature of the shotgun and pellet spread, it, it's going to be kind of hard to do. But I feel like the the way to balance a shotgun is is to balance it kind of like how the Sparks is. Um, you start off with the Romero 77, the, the full bore one, the full barreled one. And I feel like at its maximum, if you hit everyone with every pellet, it should do the same damage as the Sparks does in its maximum range. You know, the 149 damage. I feel like that's a good place to start. You do that 149 damage, you still have to quick swap to, you know, a pistol to finish someone off. And the price of the Romero is justifiable for it being a cheaper, you know, weapon because you have to get up close to it. But it's still not a guaranteed single shot weapon. Um, and then you balance the other shotguns from there, in my opinion, you know, the double barrel, it's, it's benefit is that you can get off two shotgun blasts in quick, quick succession. Um, you know, the, uh, the specter, it's benefit is that it's a pump shotgun. You have, you know, four shots where you have to reload, even though you have that, uh, you know, pump animation, it's still faster than reloading with the Romero. And so you can like kind of quickly, Get a shot, duck back in the cover, you know, rechamber a shell with your 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 uh, you know pump animation, go back out and shoot again, etc. Um, and then just the Crown of King is a semi-auto, you know, which is it's like I said, it's it's kind of debatable on whether or not those kind of weapons should be in this game. It can be argued one way or the other. Uh, personally, I don't really like the Crown of King just because I feel like it's unreliable. Um, I think it's probably just a pellet spread, but, um, there are times when you can one shot someone, you know, in the chest with it. And then seemingly at that same distance, you one shot, one shot someone in the chest, you can shoot someone three or four times and not kill them. So, and I mean, there could be different variables with that net code, lag, you know, ping, whatever. Um, but the crown of King just seems kind of unreliable, so I don't really use it, and I don't really necessarily see a ton of people using it that much anymore in comparison to some of the other in-game weapons, especially like the Dolch. The Dolch is probably the weapon, um, the end-game weapon that gets used the most. But um, so I, I feel like that's kind of a baseline, in my opinion. If I was a dev, and this is my game to balance out, I feel like that would be the baseline. Start with balancing to to where the Romero does that 149 damage like the um the uh the sparks does you know because they're basically they're a similar weapon they're a single shot weapon the sparks just has range versus the romero that doesn't um 
And again, I know it, because of the nature of the weapon, it's a pellet spread weapon. It, it, it might be hard to do that. But in my opinion, that's where I feel like it, it should be. And then you balance the other shotguns from that perspective. Um, the crossbow, I feel like, should be taken in a different direction. Because basically, the not, not including the hand crossbow, just the standard um, full crossbow, it's basically a silent shotgun right now, is what it is. Um, I... I I haven't really looked at the stats in comparison to the shotguns, but um, I've, I've, it's basically like a, a silent shotgun that's got a little bit more of an effective range. But essentially, it's the same thing. It's a single shot. Uh, it's got a, a fairly long reload time. I don't know if it's got a better reload time um, with the perk, the reload perk. Um, and what I mean by better reload time is it faster than reloading. Uh, does it have a faster reload animation than the Romero has? The Romero 77. Um, with that crossbow reload perk, I don't know. I haven't really, you know, timed it or looked at that. Um, but if that's the case, then, you know, I mean, it is a more expensive weapon and you have to spend a talent, you know, points on getting that talent. But essentially it would be a, it's a better version of a Romero with, you know, longer range and a quicker reload at that point. Um, so in my opinion, what I would like to see with the shotgun is, or not shotgun, the crossbow. I mean, what I'd like to see with the, with the crossbow is... Um, and, and going back again to comparing Hunt Showdown a little bit with Escape from Tarkov, you know, for those who are familiar with Escape from Tarkov, uh, Escape from Tarkov has kind of a unique health system where the overall health of the player, there, there's, there's multiple areas of the body that, ha that can be damaged. The legs, the stomach, the, the chest, the arms, and then the head. And each of those, uh, limb areas has its own health. And as they take damage, they get blacked out, and they can be injured. And those injuries have different status effects. You know, you can fracture an arm and fracture a leg, and you have bleeding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And those have different consequences. If the leg is blacked out and, and fractured, you move slower, your character limps. If your arms are, are blacked out and fractured or broken, you have slower ADS speed and your arms are wobbly, so it's harder to aim. You know, stuff like that. So they could implement some of those kind of mechanics to the crossbow and hunt showdown, in my opinion. I think that would add some more depth to the game. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that they need to add, like, the healing mechanics that are in Escape from Tarkov uh, into hunt showdown, but just some of those limb mechanics. So, I mean, let's say you're someone's with the bounty and you're chasing them. They're heading to an extract. You see, you get a clear shot at them, and you've got a crossbow. You take the shot, you hit them in the leg. So now that leg is injured, they've taken, you know, X amount of damage, and the crossbow bolt's in their leg, so they're bleeding from that. But now, because you've hit them in their leg, their movement speed is reduced. So now you have a better chance of chasing them down and getting to them. You know, because that's also one of the problems in the game, is that if you don't have those stamina perks... And the, you know, enemy team that's fleeing has those stamina perks. It's very hard to catch them. Or vice versa, it's, it can be hard to get away from people when you don't have those stamina perks and the people that are chasing you do. So, that's another mechanic that can add some more depth to the crossbow. You shoot someone in the leg, their movement speed's reduced, maybe their stamina regen's reduced, or they don't even regen stamina while, the, you know, maybe the bolt's in the leg, something like that. You shoot someone in the arm... Their ADS speed's reduced. Maybe if they hip fire, the hip fire is not as accurate because, you know, their arms are injured and they've got to pull the cross bolt out or they keep bleeding. Hit someone in the chest, maybe just does a little bit of extra damage and there's more bleeding. Uh, you know, they bleed out faster. Something like that. But that, that just adds more depth and more mechanics to a weapon in the game instead of just, you know... Because I'm at this range and I have this gun, I just win this battle if I hit you. You know, I just, I don't like those, those mechanics like that where it's a situation where you just lose because the person has this gun that just wins at that range. Especially, and it's especially unsatisfying when you've spent all this money on this loadout and just because of the situation that you're in, 
where someone happens to push in you on you or you're trying to push on in a building and you you can still get the drop on someone and you know you hit them in the chest you know you don't hit them in the head so you don't get that kill but you still you hit them in the chest you hit them first you spot them first but because of the weapon they have they just win that's a very unsatisfying mechanic and i and that in my opinion is one of the most frustrating things in hunt showdown and um it's something that makes you not really necessarily want to play the game you know when that happens especially when it happens repeated amount of times where you just lose to someone um that may or may not be as good at you in the game just because of the weapon they have it's very unsatisfying and um it's just it's not a enjoyable mechanic so i would like to see something like that done to the crossbow where it adds more depth to it and you can do the same thing with the you know hand crossbow maybe it needs you know you need to be at closer range for it to do certain things and then you've got the variants of the crossbows that you can tweak in its different ways um that add different status effects but in my opinion i feel like that is a a good way to um start with balancing the shotguns and and the crossbow if i was a dev those are the things that i would look at trying to do to balance those weapons out so it's um you know they're they're it's it's not just a, a give me one shot mechanic at at the specific range it still requires more skill because that's what i feel like this game really is supposed to be it's supposed to be more of a skill-based shooting game and you know i know that they've been struggling with you know the player base for or for a little while and with 1.0 it's really grown a lot and uh, unfortunately they had some server issues for a while which have now been cleared up so if you haven't played the game in a while um it's definitely worth going back and, and, and doing it now because the servers are in a good spot again. Um, but, yeah, that that's, in my opinion, that's what I would do to to balance out those those weapons. And I, I would like to see, you know, something like that add to the test server. I know that a lot of people don't play the test server, but if they added some of those things, I would like to test them out just to see how it fits in the game. So yeah, I mean, overall, those are kind of like the the real main issues. Um, the 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 last kind of main issue is one that's been an issue from the beginning as well in Hunt Showdown, and they've done various things to reduce it or lessen it, but it's still something that happens quite often, and it mostly happens now in single bounty contracts, and that's really just camping, like. In, in single bounty contracts, it really, the, the game loop just turns into people finding the boss, and then everyone just camps the boss arena, and it turns into this giant cluster F of, of fighting until one team happens to win, and they get out with the bounty, or one team kills the boss, they have the bounty token, and then they, they just literally, you know, turtle up, they've got mines and traps and stuff everywhere and so it, it's virtually impossible for you to get inside without anyone knowing that you're inside and then if you're trying to push them you got all the enemy teams that are around you know um shooting you as well where you're trying to push so it really just kind of turns into this long drawn out event and to be honest i'm not really sure exactly what could be done to fix some of these things other than a couple of small things you know they're the game timer is an hour. You have an hour time in the game. They could reduce that, you know, even by half maybe. Reduce the game time to half an hour. Just so, you know, it forces people to not be able to sit in compounds as long. Um, with bounties or not. Um, I've always said an interesting idea would be that if people sit in specific areas for too long, like in a certain radius. I don't know really what that radius would be. It would have to be played with and tested that the AI zombies in the game would start to aggro and move toward them and try to attack them. I mean, there's already AI in the game. Utilize it anymore, even more as a deterrent. And that feels like it kind of would be like a natural thing in the game. If, you know, you're in, you know, let's say, quote, unquote, that situation were to really happen and zombies were around, you know, you would think that if you just sat in a spot for a while, they would start to detect you and come after you. Now, I mean... The zombies aren't real, obviously, so maybe I'm wrong about that. But, um, you know, I feel like that would be a simple solution as well. But, again, I don't know what kind of load that would put on the servers. I don't know if that would cause a lot of other issues. You know, how much uh, coding that would be, how long it would take to implement, or if it even could be implemented. So it might be something that just couldn't be done. Um, I would also kind of like to see... Um, I know there's decoys in the game. 
But I would like to see like maybe like a lure grenade or some kind of some kind of item like that where you could throw it and it attracts zombies to that specific location from a larger area. And you know, so if people are hiding in a building, you could throw this lure grenade in there, it makes noise or does whatever for a decent amount of time and it attracts the zombies in there. And they try to force their way in. If the doors are shut or barricaded, it, they could, the zombies can set off the traps for you. Um, things like that. But it would be a way that it puts pressure on people inside um, to try to force them out. Because one, one of the biggest problems even is, even if it's a, a one, v, uh, one team v one team situation, you know, a team of two or a team of three, whatever. One team has barricaded themselves inside a building. The team that pushing is just automatically at, the dis at a disadvantage just because they're going to have traps laid out. They're going to have the dark side to see where they're coming from. And it really just comes down to, you know, the, the team that's trying to move in. All of them have to push in the building at, at basically the same time and hope they see the enemies before they get spotted. Um, it's really hard to kind of push into a building right now that's fortified well. So also maybe adding some tools or other items that could you know help break down defenses and i know there's grenades and grenades can take out concertinas but i've been in numerous situations where you know we roll up on a team that's got the bounty tokens they're sitting inside they fortified themselves and then other enemy teams come up you know we wipe the server basically and there's just the the team with the bounty left and because of the fighting that we've had we're low on meds and we're low on grenades or we're out of grenades and we just have no way of pushing in without being killed because of how fortified they are and then it just turns into a waiting game where you just have to sit there for however long until the people inside make a move and it's not really fun to play and as a content creator trying to make content on twitch and youtube it's, it's kind of not really great content that people want to see um so you know i'm not other, other than the suggestions that I just threw out there, I'm not really sure what else could be done to, you know, kind of make people, force people to, you know, out of, out of buildings and, and to not camp as much when they have the bounty. You know, they could also add some kind of timer where if you picked up the bounty tokens, you have so long before you have to attract. But that feels a little too punishing. Um, even some kind of system where... You know, after a certain amount of time, they might drop the bounty token. That feels a little too punishing, but it could also be a rewarding thing for the enemy team with the bounty tokens because once you drop the token, you know, you can, you know, people aren't being, they're not being tracked anymore by the light, you know, and it's stuff like that. So I don't know. There, there would have to be, it would have to be something that would be played with a lot, but it is something that I would like to see addressed a little bit more. And, um, see some kind of ways that they could could implement systems to get people to leave maybe maybe incentivize more rewards is what needs to happen maybe we need some better rewards for extracting with the bounties um to get people to try to leave more um i don't know i feel like that would just kind of make it to where people want to rush the boss and then um they would still just camp but i don't know I don't know what the solution really to that is, but it is frustrating when you get into those situations. Maybe the solution is to get rid of the solo boss contracts and, and maybe maybe just the trio mode or maybe even the duo mode. I don't know. Because it seems to me in my experience that the solo boss contract is where it really happens a lot. The dual boss contract, usually you run into a team you know, at the various compounds and, and you fight along the way and it just doesn't seem, it doesn't turn into that campy fest like the solo ones do so you know i don't know i don't know what the the solution to that would be other than you know some of the suggestions i threw out there and even those suggestions aren't necessarily that great i think the best one out of there probably would be to just reduce the the, the game timer to you know 30 minutes 45 minutes something like that just so that um people with the bounty actually have to move a little more you know they can't just sit there um because i've had i've had games where we've cleared the server out got both bounties and there's still you know 30 40 minutes left in a game and so there's there's nothing that forces you to leave and you can just sit there and just run around and clear the server of ai and get all kinds of xp and, and whatnot from just doing that you know just farming um which i guess is the reward for you know wiping the servers and getting the bounties but um i just feel like an hour is still a little bit too long um 
Can so yeah, going over my list here, that's pretty much everything that I've uh, got down. Going over the 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 good, the bad, and stuff I'd like to add. Um, you know, the looting mechanics, like I said, I would like to see, you know, that expand on a little bit more. Um, like to see, you know, a a larger map with a you know four man squad game mode. That would be a lot of fun. I uh, would like to see ways to be able to push into buildings a little bit easier or force people out of buildings a little bit easier. Um, and then, yeah, just uh, those really strong endgame weapons that um, might be unbalanced um, that people still have some issues with. You know, I feel like a simple solution for that would be to just make them world spawn weapons, make them really wear world spawn weapons. And you can have because they're contraband when you leave, you'd only be able to have one of each of them in your inventory. So that would be um, a good way to balance them out and make them stronger than what they are now. And, uh, yeah, just make them well spawn weapons. And then you can even add more weapons to the game that are really powerful weapons that are just world spawn weapons that are just rare uh, weapons that we'd find out there. So uh, so thanks for hanging out and uh, watching the video, guys. Hope um, you guys enjoyed the discussion. You know, feel free to continue the discussion in the comments down below. I'm probably going to post this on Reddit, too, so feel free to keep the discussion going on Reddit. If there's anything else that you would like to see added to the game, taken away from the game, anything that's currently in the game that you would like to see modified in any way, shape, or form, you know, feel free to talk about it and keep the discussion going. Uh, I'm John Matrix. You can follow me on uh, Twitch at JohnMatrix69 if you want to come by and see me uh, play some Hunt Showdown on whatever other games. You know, feel free to stop by, say hello. Um, you can follow me here on uh, YouTube. Just hit the subscribe button down below. And you can follow me on Twitter at JohnMatrix69 if you'd like. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys on the next one.